Yes, so this particular slide is devoted to refrigeration cycle. Okay, and uh, in refrigeration cycle, we'll be looking at refrigerators and heat pumps. So basically, it's, a, it's just a, a revisit of our thermodynamics. Okay, so we have uh, especially look at the, the PV, the TV diagram for phase change of different thermodynamic substances. So the working fluid for this refrigeration cycle will basically be a refrigerant. So when we say a, re, a refrigerator, or what is the purpose of a refrigerator? A refrigerator basically is used to transfer heat from a refrigerated space. Okay, so in the refrigeration compartment, heat is removed from the refrigeration compartment into a high temperature system by means of the compressor. Okay, so uh, however, the heat that is transferred cannot be okay by its own. So there is no way in which we can transfer heat from a high temperature to a lower temperature without the means or the aid of any external device, such as a compressor. Otherwise, then it will go against the law, the second law of thermodynamics. Okay, so which simply says that there is no any heat engine. So that by the end of the day, all that you can see is transfer heat from a high temperature to a lower temperature reservoir. That is not possible. Okay, so the main heart of a refrigerator is the <clears throat> is a compressor. So now, uh, refrigerators are cyclic devices. Okay, so here, what we mean by cyclic device is that the working fluid moves through a thermodynamic cycle from one state to another state and then come back to the original state again. So refrigeration process, the working fluid basically that we use is refrigerant. So we have refrigerant 1, 3, 4, A. And these are the various types of refrigerations and their thermodynamic properties that we have. Okay, we have refrigerant 1, 11, refrigerant 12, and so on and so forth. And then we have also ammonia. Okay, so basically we will be focusing our attention of refrigerant 1, 3, 4, A. That is what we have in our uh, in our property table, refrigerant one, three, four, A. Okay, this is the refrigerant, the type of refrigeration that we'll be using. However, these different types of refrigerations also, they have different physical um, and uh, uh, properties, such as the temperature, the boiling point, freezing point, okay, the vapor pressure, and so on, the enthalpy, of the fluids are given. Okay, now another device that is that transfer heat from a low temperature medium to a high temperature medium is called a heat pump. Okay, so we'll be looking at both heat pump and refrigeration. So a heat pump basically it operates similar with a refrigeration, but the desired output for a heat pump is the 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 hot air that comes out of the heat pump, okay? So in refrigerators, I used to maintain refrigerators, refrigeration space, okay, by removing the heat from it, whereas heat pumps are used to maintain heat space, heated space at high temperature by absorbing heat from a low temperature source, such as cold, outside air, and so on and so forth. So basically, heat pumps are and the application can be found in, uh, in, in winter, okay? In places where you have winter, where you have very, very cold air, outside air is very, very cold, minus 10, minus 12, and so on like this. So let us look at the different types of um, operation, mode of operation for both a uh, refrigeration cycle and a heat pump, okay? So in a refrigerator, this is the refrigerator space. And in this refrigerator space, heat is being absorbed. Okay, so the heat is transferred to a, 
environment by means of an external device, which is called a compressor. You see here we have work input. This is a network input to the compressor. Without a, the compressor, there is no way in which we can have heat transfer from a lower temperature to a higher temperature. Okay, so we'll look into details about this. So primarily, the amount of energy which is absorbed and the low temperature reservoir is given by what we call QL. So the QL is the amount of heat which is taken out. Imagine that you put some, let's say, water at temperature of 25 into a, the deep freezer. So the deep freezer, maybe the temperature of the deep freezer is about minus 20. So immediately you put water at 20 degrees or 25 degrees Celsius into the refrigerator space or the deep freezer, there will be heat transfer from the water to the refrigerator space. So it means that the temperature of the refrigerator space is going to increase. And this heat consequently has to be removed. Okay, so the device which is responsible for the removal of this heat from the refrigerator space is uh, uh, will be uh, will be discussed later on. You understand me? Okay, so it's very very important. So the heat will be removed, and the magnitude of the heat which is removed from this refrigerator space is given by QL. And then the amount of work input needed to operate the compressor is called W net. Okay, and QL is the amount of heat which is emitted to the surrounding. So for every refrigerator, if you, even your local refrigerator, if you put your hand behind the refrigerator, you see that the air that comes out is warm. So it is this Q out which is being rejected to the surrounding in this way. Okay, so and primarily in refrigerators, we have the main parameters involved is this W in the QH as well as the QL. Okay, so the performance of the refrigerator is going to define, is going to be defined based on these parameters. All right. Then now if you come to the heat pump, so a heat pump is a device which is used to transfer heat from a cold environment. So by means of this, the heat is being heated up or the temperature of this, which is at TL, the temperature is elevated by means of an external device called a compressor. So then the heat, or the warm air now, is discharged into the room. You understand me? So this will keep the room very warm. So the desired, the desired output for a heat pump is given by QH, whereas the desired output for a refrigerator is given by QH. Don't say that it's QH. For a refrigerator, it's not possible that the desired output is QH. Even though Q is coming out of their system, that is not the desired output. So for all refrigerators, we are interested in maintaining the refrigerator space at a lower temperature. So that is our desired output. You understand? And then for a, a heat pump, the desired output for a heat pump is the QH. Now, the coefficient of performance for both uh, refrigerators and heat pumps is defined by means of the Carnot cycle or the Carnot heat engine. And by definition, COP, okay, the COP for the refrigerator, COP, the COP for the refrigerator normally is given by the desired output, which is Okay, I will say this for refrigerator QL divided by W in. Okay, but again, this W in, if you establish the energy balance, W in equals to QH minus QL. Okay, so if we establish the energy balance for a refrigerator, this is going to give us W in equals to QL minus QH. So if I substitute Q, W in into this equation, now we will have something like this. QL divided by QH minus what? QL. 
You understand? Now, for all reversible heat engine, for all reversible, for all reversible, reversible heat engine, heat engine. So, a refrigerator is also a heat engine. You understand me? So, what is the classical definition for a heat engine? A heat engine is a device, okay, that operates on a thermodynamic cycle such a way that it operates between two uh, thermal energy reservoirs. That is a high thermal energy reservoir and then a low thermal energy reservoir. And it operates on a thermodynamic cycle. You understand? So that's the classical definition for a heat engine. You understand? So we have the Carnot heat engine, um, which is the basic theoretical heat engine for all uh, ideal or reversible cycles. So for all heat engines, Carnot is saying that the ratio of QL divided by QH is always given by TL divided by TH. You understand me? So this definition is applicable only for reversible cycles. So wherever I see QL, QL and QH, I'll just replace by TL and TH. So eventually, the COP for the refrigerator gives me TL divided by TH minus what? TL. You understand me? So that's the classical definition. And this is what you refer to as the, the Carnot refrigeration cycle. Now, if we move on to the heat pump, for a heat pump, the desired output for a heat pump, the desired output for a heat pump, the coefficient of performance for a heat pump is given by QH divided by and divided by W in. Sorry. And let me see. Divided by W in. Sorry. W in. So eventually you will have COP. For a heat pump, it says QH divided by W, sorry, QE, QH minus QL. So again, for a reversible heat pump, a reversible heat pump, COP for a reversible heat pump, for a reversible heat pump, so heat pump. So that gives us TH divided by TH minus what tl and that's what we have in this equation okay now uh, refrigerators or refrigeration has many practical applications in modern life domestic food preservation okay freezing of ice and so on and so forth air condition applications okay there we have cryogenic uh, systems that is systems that are operated very 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 extremely low temperature for the purpose of gas liquefaction, okay? So, and then uh, also air condition application, hospitals. So it has a very wide range of application, air condition systems. So now let us look classically at the, uh, the theoretical aspect of refrigeration cycle. This theoretical aspect is being proposed by what to call the cannot, the reverse cannot refrigeration cycle. Reverse, what is reverse cannot refrigeration cycle? Okay, this comes from the cannot heat engine. We all know that the cannot heat engine operates also on a thermodynamic cycle, okay, in which it operates between two thermal energy reservoirs, a higher temperature and a lower temperature energy reservoir. Now, the reverse cannot cycle consists primarily of four main components. One of the components is a condenser, we have the compressor, and then we have the evaporator. You understand me? And then finally we have the turbine. So what happened is like this. You see, this is the cold room or the refrigerated space. Refrigerated space. Okay, so in this refrigerator space, heat, okay, equivalent to about Q in, is being absorbed. 
okay, by the evaporator. So now in this evaporator, we have um, the working fluid passing through the evaporator. The fluid over here is normally refrigerant. So I'll say refrigerant 1, 3, 4, A. Refrigerant 1, 3, 4, A. And the state of the fluid over here is saturated, saturated, saturated liquid. Okay? Saturated liquid. Saturated liquid means it is a liquid which is just about to start evaporation. You understand me? So now, when this saturated liquid enters the evaporation uh, evaporator, it will start evaporating because of the fact that the temperature over here is much higher than the temperature of the refrigerant. You understand me? You can imagine if you pour deodorant on your palm or on your hand, what <clears throat> effect do you feel? So the moment you pour liquid deodorant on your hand, it will immediately evaporate. Why is it evaporating? Because the temperature of your body is much, much higher for it to start boiling. It means that the boiling point, the boiling temperature for the, the, the uh, sorry, for the deodorant is very, very, very low. It means the deodorant can boil easily at 10 degrees Celsius. You understand me? So if your body temperature is about 35 or 36, so it is sufficient to start boiling there refrigerant so that's why uh, sorry the your your skin start evaporating the the deodorant the same thing is happening over here even though somebody will say say the temperature of the refrigerator refrigerator space is very very low yes it's true but since the boiling temperature of this refrigerant is also very 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 low the moment it comes in contact with this so this will be a hot a hot space for this refrigerant. So the moment it comes, it comes in contact with it, it will start absorbing the heat. It will absorb in the heat. So when it absorbs the heat, then all the liquid will be converted into vapor. So in this state, we have saturated uh, vapor. You understand me? So now the vapor enters into the compressor. Yes. So uh, as far as, let's say, the reverse cannot cycle is concerned, the fluid over here is actually not vapor. It is saturated liquid vapor, liquid vapor mixture. Saturated, saturated liquid vapor mixture. Yes, so. Yes, so let's see. Yes, the fluid over here is saturated liquid vapor mixture. Saturated liquid vapor mixture. Okay, mixture. Whereas the fluid over here, again, this is also saturated liquid vapor mixture. So this enters the compressor. Now, the compressor compresses the fluid to a high temperature and pressure before the fluid eventually enters the condenser. So what is the job of the condenser? The job of the condenser is to release the heat to the surrounding. Okay? So the heat is finally released to the surrounding. That's why I say if you put your hand behind your refrigerator, you feel um, the air that is coming out is very hot. Okay? So now... It means that all the fluid over here is being cooled down back to saturated liquid vapor mixture state. You understand me? So again, the fluid will start, and um, the fluid over here, eventually this is saturated vapor. It means during the compression process, all the fluid becomes now saturated vapor at the exit of the compressor. Then eventually, the fluid is cooled down up to saturated liquid state. And then it expands again in this turbine. So now if you look on the TS diagram, the TS diagram for this cycle is like this. So initially, the fluid is here. 
let's say state one, the fluid is compressed at a saturated vapor state, saturated liquid vapor. Okay, so I think most of you, you are familiar with this TS diagram. Okay, so I will not waste my time on this TS diagram, which uh, let's say we have, you have already discussed in your thermodynamics. Okay, so if you have a line like this, this is temperature entropy diagram. And this line, this line corresponds to constant pressure lines. These are constant pressure lines. You understand me? And this is saturated liquid state. This dome, saturated liquid vapor mixture. And this is saturated vapor state. You understand me? So here, as far as the reverse canal cycle is concerned, our fluid is entering the compressor at saturated liquid vapor state. Okay? Then it is compressed to vapor, saturated vapor. Then it will be cooled down. Cooling down means that the temperature will be reduced. Sorry, and the, the, the fluid, the temperature will remain constant. This is constant temperature cooling. You understand me? So we only have change of phase. Change of, whenever you have change of phase and the fluid is being cooled down, the temperature will remain the same. Just like you are boiling water. I've told you last time that if you put water on a, on a stove and temperature reaches 100 degrees Celsius, you continue giving heat to it, the temperature will remain constant. It will not change because the excess heat will be used to convert the liquid into vapor. The same situation we have over here. Also, during condensation, because of the fact that you have some liquid vapor mixture in this dome, okay, so the temperature will remain stuck at TH. And then eventually, before you start seeing a cooling process, okay, so a change of phase from uh, vapor into liquid. Okay, so basically, this is the TS diagram for the reverse canal cycle. Now, uh, the cycle efficiency is no longer suitable for the working fluid of a refrigerator or refrigeration system. So in refrigeration systems, we don't say, what is the efficiency of the refrigerator? No, it's, it's not a good statement. Because uh, efficiency basically is applied to a heat engine. Okay, so like a steam power cycle, internal combustion engine, gas power cycle, and so on and so forth. But when it comes to refrigeration cycle, because our desired output for the refrigeration is the heat which is removed from the refrigerator space, we define the criteria for the performance of a refrigerator by means of what? COP. And what is COP? This is called coefficient of performance. So coefficient of performance is given by the desired effect divided by the work input. You understand me? So it means the desired work output. Sorry, the desired output is the Q in whereas the required input is, or the work input is the W in. Okay, so now again, this I've already explained. I don't waste much time. So now this <clears throat> W in, yes, can be defined as WC minus WT. And then if you substitute into this equation, we have this. So then again, uh, if you go by, let's say, the first law of thermodynamics, or let's say the uh, definition for the reversible heat engine, this equation can also be expressed in terms of Q in divided by Q, uh, Q out minus Q in, okay, which is again equals to, so we have W in is equal to Q out minus Q in, like this, okay? So if you substitute, let's say, QL divided by QH equals to TL divided by TH into this equation, eventually you can get this, okay? So this is the theoretical uh, for a reversible heat engine, the 
coefficient of performance for the refrigerator is given by this. Now, for the heat pump, it is similar situation. The coefficient of performance is this. Okay, so the kernel cycle needs to be modified. So now, the kernel cycle, the reverse kernel cycle is not an efficient cycle. There are some, so many weaknesses associated with the kernel cycle. Now, let us see. Now, the reverse kernel cycle is not suitable model for refrigeration. Why is this so? Let us see. We say that the process one to two, which is isentropic compression, process one to two, which is isentropic compression, and, and then process three to four, which is isentropic expansion, cannot be approximately closely in practice. So let's say over here, let me draw the TS diagram over here for us to see very well. So you see very clearly, this is high pressure line and this is the low pressure line. So we have this. This is state one, state two, three, and then this is state four. Okay, so state one is isentropic compression. So imagine that, you see, this state, what is the property of the fluid at this state? It is saturated liquid vapor mixture, right? Now, this saturated liquid vapor mixture, if you feed a compressor, with this type of property of the fluid, immediately there will be cavitation. What is cavitation? Cavitation is a situation. Cavitation is a situation where you have droplet of, let's say, liquid inside a rotating, a rotating device. So this droplet of water will knock the blade, and then eventually there will be what? Corrosion. And then cavitation will be resulting in the device. You understand? So, um, it is not best way to feed a compressor to it a saturated liquid vapor mixture. Or and again, compressors are known to compress only compressible fluids, compressible fluid like gas, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and so on and so forth. If you feed a compressor with water, liquid, immediately you are spoiling the compressor. You understand me? So that is it. And then also for the isentropic expansion process, for the expansion process, we have saturated liquid. You see, saturated liquid three to four entering the turbine. Eventually, how much energy can you get out of the turbine? Very, 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 very small. At this particular state, this is saturated, saturated liquid. It's like you are pouring water into a turbine. So you get zero work output. That is it. So we are going to make modification on this particular reverse kernel cycle by removing this and replace it with a good device. And then we are going to make a modification to the compressor as well. Okay, so now, and uh, let's see. Now number two, this is because process one to two involves the compression of what? Liquid vapor mixture, which requires a compressor that will handle two phases. So most compressors can only handle one phase, namely the gas, the gaseous phase. And then the fluid droplets in this mixture can damage the compressor blades. You understand me? Now, process two, three to four involves the expansion of high moisture. High moisture means very high level of water inside of the refrigerant. Now, the expansion process or the expansion through the turbine produces little W work that is wt compared with wc therefore to save a capital cost okay and maintain the cost the turbine is normally replaced by an expansion valve okay so now uh, let's see let's look at the general features characteristics of the refrigerator okay so now here we have the fluid that is entering this refrigeration compartment. And what's the property of the fluid here? Temperature is minus 25 degrees Celsius. Pressure is 120 kilopascal. Okay, so now 
the temperature of this fluid is very, very, very low. Okay? Compare with the temperature, let's say TL over here, the temperature in the refrigeration cycle. Okay? Now, uh, assuming that the temperature in the refrigeration, <coughs> this is about, let's say, one degree Celsius, or let's say, uh, I'll say five degrees Celsius. Five, I'll say five degrees Celsius. Five degrees Celsius. That's the temperature in this space, in this refrigeration space. Now, when this working fluid enters the coil, because it is at a very, very, very low temperature, okay, it is going to absorb heat from this hot refrigeration space. So its temperature is going to be what? Elevated. So once the temperature increases, you see, here we have increase in temperature from minus 25 to minus 20. How, why does the temperature increase? Because this working fluid, the, the refrigerant, is absorbing heat from this refrigerated space. Now the fluid, which is at this state, is in the saturated vapor state. Now this enters the compressor. Now the compressor compresses the fluid to a high temperature and pressure. So, and then eventually the heat is rejected from the surround to a, from the condenser to the surrounding. Again, the fluid, the temperature of the fluid is cooled down. Again, now uh, you see the turbine has been replaced by an expansion valve, which is much, much better than a turbine. You understand? Okay, so the same situation we have over here in this particular diagram. Okay, so now uh, let's see what are the main functions of the compressors and then the condenser. The main function of the compressor is one, providing the driving force for the entire system by drawing low pressure refrigerant, refrigerant in and adding pressure such that it exits at a high temperature. You understand? So the main function of this compressor is to provide a driving, the driving force, which is going to push, push the fluid from a low temperature to a high temperature, also from a low pressure to a high pressure. You understand? Me? So that's the main function of the compressor. Okay? And then we have the condenser. The condenser is used to remove the excess heat in the refrigeration cycle to the surrounding this way. And then we have the expansion valve. So you know the, uh, the main function of an expansion valve is to expand the fluid by expanding reduction in temperature and pressure of the fluid. You understand me? So that's the main function of this, uh, of the valve. Okay, now the evaporator, the evaporator absorbs heat from the cold space by virtue of what? Temperature gradient. You understand me? I've told you maybe the temperature of the refrigerant over here, minus 25, and temperature of the, uh, uh, of the refrigerated space is TL. So all the time, this T temperature of the fluid is much, much lower the temp than the temperature of TL. Okay, so now uh, schematic diagram for the vapor compression refrigeration cycle is given by this. Okay, so now you see before we were having the cannot reverse refrigeration, sorry, cannot refrigeration cycle. After making the modification, now the device will be given a new name, and that new name is called the uh, refrig uh, sorry, vapor compression refrigeration cycle. You understand me? So uh, it is no longer the reverse cannot cycle. This is now called a vapor compression refrigeration cycle. So now in vapor compression refrigeration cycle, what is the classical difference between it and then the reverse? So the only difference is that in the vapor compression refrigeration cycle, for example, the fluid enters the, or the isentropic process starts at x equals to 
one. For example, again, I draw the TS diagram. The TS diagram. This is the TS diagram for the vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Okay, so like this. So now here, uh, state one to two is given by isentropic compression. So this is TS. Isentropic compression means this is state one. The fluid is compressed isentropically at X equals to one. What is the meaning of X? X is what called vapor fraction. X, so if you are forgetting your thermodynamics, X is called vapor, vapor fraction. You understand? That is the amount of vapor that is present. And at this particular state, the value for X equals to zero. So X start increasing from zero all the way up to one. So basically, x takes value s greater than or equal to zero, but less than or equal to one. Okay, that's the rate of value for x. Now, process two to three, heat is rejected from a refrigerant at constant pressure. So you see, here this is the pressure line. Let's say, I'll say this is P1, this is P2. Okay, so now the temperature over here is no longer a constant temperature. But instead, we have the heat is rejected at constant pressure line. This is a constant pressure line. You understand me? On the TS diagram, this line refers to what we call the constant pressure line. Okay? And then eventually, uh, so three to four. Three, so this is state one, this is state two, this is state three. And then three to four, we have throttling process. So the fluid is throttled down up to state four, okay, into a two-phase regime. And then eventually we have heat absorption at constant pressure. So now there will be heat absorption over here as the fluid is being heated in the what refrigerated space like this. Okay, so... Uh, these are the various diagrams that are associated with the diagrams. Uh, sorry, with the, uh, the, the cannot vapor compression, ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Okay, so here we have isentropic compression from state one up to state two. Okay, so when we say isentropic, isentropic, what do we mean by isentropic? Isentropic means constant what constant entropy process constant entropy process a process in which that is you have s1 equals to what s2 you understand so s is given by the entropy so any just like we have isobaric constant pressure isothermal constant temperature, adiabatic, no heat transfer, isochoric, constant volume, and so on and so forth. Same as we have isentropic process. Isentropic process is a process during which uh, the change in entropy between the two states remains the same. You understand me? In other words, the delta S, delta S is always equals to zero for all isentropic processes. That's why you have a vertical line over here. S1 equals to S2. Okay, so then gradually at this particular state, the heat is removed slowly at constant pressure. This is called a constant pressure line. You understand me? So it is no longer constant temperature. Heat is removed at varying temperature. So up to state three. So then eventually the fluid is what expand. So the expansion process is a, is a reversible process. It does not expand isentropically. Because at this particular state, now, uh, before we leave, let me give you a very clear idea about the entropy of a system. Okay, so normally entropy is the degree of irreversibility or disorderliness of a system. When a system becomes more and more disordered state, 
okay, then we say the entropy of the system has increased. You understand me? So, and a change of state from state three up to state four, this is true an irreversible process because you cannot say S3 equals to S4. No, they are not the same. You understand me? So this, uh, again, an expansion which is an irreversible. So all throttling processes are irreversible processes. But however, we can uh, compress the fluid through an isentropic process, assuming that the device, the device we are using is a reversible device, namely the compressor. You understand? So reversible compressor. So this is a, a general diagram, pH diagram for the ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle. So here we have pressure and what? <clears throat> uh, let me see. The, the enthalpy, that is H, specific enthalpy diagram for the vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Okay, so now we have our saturated line over here, this dark line. Okay, it goes like this. Okay, now state one belongs to this state. Okay, so maybe I should draw it properly so you can see pH diagram. It goes like this. Okay. So it has two main lines, high pressure line and a low pressure line, like this. Okay. So now in the first instant, the fluid is compressed from state one. This is state one. Isentropically. So it goes all the way. Isentropically from state one up to state two. Okay. So this, this line tells us that there is change in enthalpy. H1 and H2 are not the same. You understand me? And then from state two, we go back to state three. State three is given by this. And then eventually, the fluid is expanded. Okay? So the expansion now is expanded through a constant entropy process. So from state three, up to state four in this way. So it means that for all for all expansion valve, expansion valve, so we will stop very soon. Expansion valve, H3 is always equals to H4, like this. Okay, so let me see. I think we will stop over here. So again, I apologize for the technical problem we were facing before. Okay, so hopefully we can uh, continue our discussion again in the next class. Okay, so I, I would like to invite anybody, if there is any question, and um, please uh, let us discuss now. Otherwise, then I think uh, we will stop over here. If there is any question, please uh, let me know immediately.